Welcome to Lecture 12 for CED 405 Spiritual Formations. Today's lecture is going to be on the spiritual discipline of worship. The English word worship is a combination of two words, worth and ship. This means that worship is attributing worth to something or someone. The purpose of this lesson will be to define worship biblically list where worship should be done, and present ways to worship the Lord. So let's begin by answering the question, what is worship in the Bible? In the Old Testament, the word in the Hebrew translated worship, which is shaka, means to bow down. And in the New Testament, the Greek word translated worship Proskuneo means to kiss the hand of one in reverence. Thirdly, according to Matthew 15, verses 8 and 9, Jesus said that true worship must be authentic. In this passage, he declared that worship that is outward but not inward is vain. And lastly, according to John chapter 4, verse 24, true worship must be scriptural. While Jesus was having his conversation with the woman at the well, he told her that we must worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. This means that one cannot do anything contrary to the word of God and consider it worship. Now that we've learned that worship must be reverential, authentic, and scriptural, let's answer the question, where do we worship? Going back to that passage of John chapter 4, the Lord told us that worship is not confined to a geographical location. While debating the Samaritan woman about the proper place to worship, Jesus explained that there will come a time, which is today, when worship will not be done at a certain place, but will be done in spirit and in truth. In spirit pertains to the location, and in truth pertains to proper doctrine. This means that worship can be done any time, any place, and anywhere. Thirdly, if worship should be done reverentially, authentically and scripturally and we know now that we can worship at any place anytime anywhere how do we worship well the first way we should worship is worship in the spirit in philippians 3 3 paul said to worship god in the spirit and rejoice in christ jesus this means that when we worship god it must be done in submission to the Spirit that dwells within us and through His leading. Secondly, we worship by surrendering ourselves. While writing the church in Rome, Paul declared in Romans 12 verse 1, Therefore I urge you, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies a living and holy sacrifice, acceptable to God, which is your spiritual service of worship. According to this verse, we are to surrender our bodies as a form of worship to the Lord. After all, if Jesus was willing to glorify God by dying for us, then we should be willing to worship the Lord by living for Him. Not only should we worship the Lord in spirit and by surrendering ourselves, but let her see... Worship by giving God glory. The psalmist declared in Psalm 29, verse 2, Give unto the Lord the glory due unto his name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. The use of Hebrew parallelism used in this verse shows that worship is giving God the glory that is due to him. The word glorify just means to give dignity, honor, praise, and worship. 
And there are several ways we can accomplish this task of glorifying God. First, we should glorify God with our good works. Matthew chapter 5 verse 16 explains that our good works will be seen by others and cause them to glorify the Father who is in heaven. And John chapter 15 verse 8 declares that our fruits or the good works that we do will glorify God and prove that we truly are disciples of Christ. But not only should we glorify God with our good works, secondly, we should glorify the Lord in our body. The context here is directly referring to fleeing from sexual immorality. Therefore, we glorify God in our body by not fulfilling the lustful, fleshly desires we have. This is on account of the fact that our body is the temple of God, so we should treat it rightly because sexual sins are sins directly against our own bodies. Thirdly, we should glorify God through the work of evangelism. The context of 2 Corinthians 9 pertains to the idea that the work of evangelism is done by going and by giving. Either way, God is glorified in the going and God is glorified in the giving toward those who come to know his son. Fourthly, we should glorify God by accomplishing his plan for our lives. Here in John chapter 17 verse 4, Jesus declared that he glorified the Father by accomplishing the work that God gave him to do. This means that God is glorified when we do what he wants us to do with our lives. And fifthly and lastly, we should glorify God in everything we do. Just in case anything was left out, this verse explains it all by saying that whether we eat or drink or whatever we do, we should do it all to the glory of God. Therefore, all that we do should be a form of worship to God because we're doing it for His glory. Well, that brings us to the end of Lecture 15 for CED 405 Spiritual Formations.